Out with the old and in with the new. Beaumont City Council answered the call from concerned residents and approved a brand new basketball court for the Sterling Pruitt Activity Center. The old one is deteriorating and it has some safety concerns. Good evening, Southeast Texas. I'm Cameron Seibert. The floor was put down 15 years ago and Councilman A.J. Turner says the upgrade is well past due. 12 News reporter Ebony Coleman spoke with the councilman about this new court and Ebony, I understand he's wanted this for some time now. That's right, Cameron. For Councilman Turner, a new floor is personal. He coached youth basketball before taking office, and after years of local players asking for his help, he's finally able to give them what they've been deserving. A lot of the kids felt like the community didn't, or the city council didn't care because it hasn't been replaced in so long. This old court at Sterling Pruitt Activity Center in Beaumont is about to get a major upgrade. Soon, players will be showing off their skills on a brand new gym floor. Something Beaumont City Councilman A.J. Turner says is a long time coming. On my second council meeting, I brought it up. And I literally advocated the entire year, even in budget season, and staff heard me and enough council supported the recommendation and everybody voted in favor, 7 -0. The floor will cost the city $75,000 using money from a new parks and recreation budget. The design will feature the city of Beaumont's official colors. As a former youth coach, Turner says it means just as much to him as it does to families in the community. It got to the point where the kids were literally sliding on the floor while they were trying to play ball. So I told them, you know, if I ran, I would do my best to try to get this thing done. It may not improve your game, but it will definitely keep players safe. My cousin Lorenzo, he did complain about how the floor was kind of coming up and it wasn't smooth and it would kind of mess up the bottoms of the, the soles of their shoes. Daryl Hayes has family living in the area of the center. He thinks it will give kids in the neighborhood something to look forward to. They just will appreciate a lot more and they'll understand like the city's trying to do something for them. So I pride myself in relationships because ultimately it all boils down to having the majority votes to get things done. Turner says a new floor is set to be installed by the end of the year and will be paid for through the city's $1.4 million parks and recreation budget. Ebony Coleman, 12 News. All right, a warm start to the week ahead in the Golden Triangles. We turn things over to the storm trackers to get a look at your forecast. A live view outside on the roofing 911 sky cam at Packard LaPre. 66 degrees, but the humidity at 80%. Nothing new here in Southeast Texas in the Storm Tracker Center right now. Meteorologist Kerry Cooper. We could be chasing some records at the start of this week. Yeah, especially by Tuesday, the record's 81 degrees. We're going to be pushing that. So above normal temperatures we've been talking about the last week or so is going to continue. A little bit of a cool down by the middle end of the week, which we'll talk about later. Big weather story today was the windy conditions. Look at the peak wind gust. That wind gust over 20, 25 miles an hour across southeast Texas today. Looks pretty windy coming up tomorrow as well. Right now, temperatures running in the mid 60s, cloudy skies, lots of clouds working in from the west tonight and temperatures and eh, they're not going anywhere. It's going to be a warm muggy night with south winds off the Gulf. Temperatures holding in the lower to middle 60s. We'll talk about a few showers in the forecast tomorrow. Better chance of storms by Wednesday. We'll talk all about it coming up in just a few minutes. We turn out a continuing coverage on a home eviction turned shootout Saturday in Call, Texas. Newton Police Chief Will Jackson is on bed rest tonight after a bullet connected with his bulletproof vest. That bullet hit the chief in his back and pierced his skin, causing a minor injury. He spent the night at St. Elizabeth Hospital in Beaumont, and he tells 12 News he was released this afternoon. While he rests at home, these two suspects are at the Newton County Jail. Elsie Gosey and Betty Richards refused to be evicted Saturday and instead opened fire on police. They now each face a charge of attempted capital murder of a peace officer. Bond for both set at $1 million. The house they were staying at is right here in the 3100 block of FM 1004 in call. Officers called there around 930 Saturday morning. They knocked, asked the occupants to leave, but instead were met with gunfire. Chief Jackson got hit and officers had to retreat and set up a perimeter. They called for backup and Newton County Sheriff Robert Burby used a loudspeaker to finally get those suspects to surrender. The job that the officers do out there every day, putting their lives on the line and everything, it is something that people take uh, for granted, but it's something that we do every day. Again, the good news, Chief Jackson now out of the hospital. He tells 12 News he's back at home. He says he's a little sore and, of course, pretty tired, but he is back in one piece. A teenager from Louisiana facing charges tonight after he crashed a stolen truck in Beaumont. 
Around 3.30 this morning, Jefferson County deputies were called about a suspicious person in the Finette area. We're mapping this all out for you. A home alarm went off in the 10,000 block of Jonathan Court in Beaumont. When the resident checked their security camera, they saw the suspect in a face mask climbing into a car. Responding deputies then saw the suspect trying to escape through houses. Then a white Ford truck was seen fleeing the area. Deputies now had a chase on their hands. It eventually ended at the intersection of Washington Boulevard and Finette Road with a crash. That patrol unit police were driving also wrecked out. After the wreck, the suspect was taken to Minnie Rogers Juvenile Detention Facility. He's charged with unauthorized use of a motor vehicle and evading detention in a motor vehicle. Deputies say the truck was stolen out of Finette. They also found two stolen handguns inside. They think the suspect wasn't acting alone, and they're looking for more people who may have been involved in these burglaries. They're asking any residents in the neighborhood of Don Drive to check their security footage, and if they see anything, call the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. Meanwhile, in Orange County, another stolen vehicle crash. This one, law enforcement still trying to find the suspect. Friday night around 930, Orange County Constable Matt Ortigo was in the 1100 block of Orange Street. He spotted a white pickup hauling a livestock trailer and says he knew who the owner was and who it belonged to. So he called them and confirmed that it was in fact missing from their house. Ortigo tried stopping the vehicle, but the driver fled. Eventually, they got stuck on the side of the road and ran off into a wooded area. That suspect still on the run tonight. If you have any information, you're urged to call Crime Stoppers at 409-833-TIPS. The Southeast Texas community and staff at Cotton Creek Winery are mourning the loss this weekend of their beloved boss. The owner of the Beaumont Winery, Artie Tucker, died Wednesday after a battle with stage 4 lung and liver cancer. Longtime Cotton Creek employee Derek McWilliams took to Facebook to describe his boss and good friend. He calls Tucker a, quote, mastermind of all wines, ciders, and much more. 12 News spoke to Derek Williams at a fundraiser for Tucker back in February of last year. It just shows how much they are well respected and loved in this community, and it's just it's very overwhelming and I, I'm, I'm very blessed to be a part of it. Winery staff shared their gratitude on Facebook, thanking the community for kind words and condolences as they continue to navigate a difficult time. They do plan to keep the winery open and alive in his honor. Cotton Creek planning to be closed Friday, January 20th, so the staff can attend Tucker's memorial. That service at Broussard's Mortuary in Beaumont. It starts at 6 o'clock. Memorial contributions can be made to the American Cancer Society or the MD Cancer Center for Research.